Greetings, greetings. It's Lisa Bubari, and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. Uh, I am the founder of Heal Within a Healing Center in Glendale, California. Uh, Heal Within stands for Heal Within, where transformation begins. I am so glad to be here with you. Isn't it good to be here? That's right. Uh, hello, Marriott. Uh, thank you for being here. Today we are going to continue talking about uh, the five languages of love and today's language of love is going to be something that may be difficult for some and yet very loving for others and it is the relationship and the love between a child and our mothers. Hmm. So why am I talking about love of mom and mother and our children because I've been going through the same thing and believe it or not even as a coach as a hypnotherapist as everything all the work that I have done on myself for years and years spends thousands of money on going to improve myself elevate myself and empower myself from seminars coaches and even getting coaching and doing retreats, I realize one thing, that there is always something to learn more about ourselves and improve and become better, become better and healthier and stronger, whatever it is, so that in turn, I can help my clients, so that in turn, I can empower someone else when they are in this situation. So today's topic is our relationship with ourselves and our core that starts with our mother. And before I go any further, how is your relationship with your mother? Are you distant? Are you close? Are you friends? Are you just mother and daughter or son? Or are you very tight and you are with them all the time? It's like the buddy system. And this brings me to sharing something with you, something, something personal, something that it's most of the time I talk about information and inspirations and things like that. But I thought if I share something with you today, it might shed a light of where I'm coming from. And I didn't know this about myself until I had my own coaching and did a very core, core deep session. And the session was supposed to be completely about something else. And it went straight to the connection of me. Um, and by all means, this is about me. It does not mean it's about you or someone you know. It's not about a client. So right off the bat, uh, I didn't realize that no matter what I do in life, I think I've, I've talked about this, that I was not reaching my potential as I see my potential. And potential or success can mean different things to different people. So what I realized was I was holding myself back. So in my coaching, in my session, I had to work on what is it that I hold myself back from or why is it that I hold myself back? Lo and behold, after doing a lot of core therapy, I was holding myself back because a long time ago when I was a little kid, believe it or not, <laughs> that was one of the biggest revelations, although it's a reality, I was... Um, disciplined um, like as if I was in the military even one of my friends I recall so vividly calling our house like oh it was the military or the Gestapo because it I was so military you can't do this you can't do that no you can't go here you can't do that and they used to spank me a lot I was a tomboy in and my parents having this lovely, beautiful girl, an only child and a girl, 
I felt, not reality, I felt I was deprived of a lot of things or held back from going to places, even up into my teen years. And not realizing that everything that they did, my parents, especially my mother and grandmother, that they were the world to me, especially my grandmother, she was the biggest disciplinarian. Uh, I got spanked, I got beaten, uh, everything. And then they also gave the permission for my school, which is an all-girls Catholic school, for them to also discipline me the same way. Because in a way, they could not control this adventurous kid that would go up the trees, up the walls, and wanted, I wanted to explore the world. I wanted to expand and reach out. So for them not knowing how to control this girl, the only way they did it was to protect me by spanking, by depriving me, or saying no to going to places that they didn't know or they didn't think I was safe. For the longest time, I had this issue inside me that I felt I hold myself back before they do it, or I hold myself back because I'm not worthy. I hold myself back because, in a way, this deprivation or depriving, it became a pattern for this little girl to create on her own, even though it was no longer real or valid. Now, this in mind, we come two decades, three decades, four decades later, and the question is, why do I hold myself back until I did that core work? deep work, the same way as I work with my clients for them to reach their full potential is to tap within their core self. And one of the ways we do it, one of the tools we use is hypnosis. It's this neuroscience coaching that I just learned how it is done. It's this deep tapping within ourselves, even tapping to open up the uh, how do we call it, the meridian lights. And by touch, expanding, and when we are ready, we can get to it so fast. And in one session, in three hours, and in three hours, in one session, so much unraveled. And that is the work that I now want to explore and bring with my clients, do this a VIP half days, three hours to get to the nick of things that we can just breathe and reach our full potential, as we call it, to know that we are worthy, that we do matter. And there is so much beauty and gift in us. So what I thought they were depriving me of and keeping me safe, but it was the what we call it nowadays, the wrong way, it was right for them. It was the only way that she knew and she knew how to do, and they were the world for me. So they, in a way, were the ones who governed my world. They were the voice of authority. And how many of us have a voice of authority that we believe in, trust in, and feel safe? So in a way, my safety, although I was safe and I knew I was safe, that's why I was this adventurous explorer. To this day, I am the same. It's being this social extrovert and yet being shy. And I wanted to know where that comes from. That holding back, not reaching, going forward to the fullest and saying, I too matter. I too have the potential to be the success, not the success of your world or other people, but mine. And mine could be completely different than what other people is. It could be health. 
That could be a success in health. It could be a success in body image, in confidence. It could be success in money, in dollars. It could be a success in relationship, in family, in children. So by doing this kind of a work, it doesn't matter. It's not about the bank. Success is not always the dollar signs in the bank or how many big organizations you have, but the success you feel about yourself. And that is the self-esteem that we work on. So even though I am confident and I have the self-esteem, I wonder, is there some way I can become better? How can I improve my relationship with my mother since grandma is no longer here? Months ago, I moved in with my mom. And since I moved in with her, it, the dynamic of our relationship after 30 years of living on my own has changed. So in a way, it's I'm standing up for myself and saying, I am not your little girl, but I am your daughter. You are not my mommy. You are my mother. So in a way, I don't need to be mommied or I'm not this little girl that you have to pamper and care for and wash the clothes and everything. And yet, I want your gentleness. I want your protection that probably as a child, I did not feel protected. But every time I would say something, I would be reprimanded. So... The dynamic is changing, and I believe each and every one of us, as we grow older, hmm, our dynamic with our parents change. We become the caretakers. We become the protectors. We become the ones who nurture. But if we have not seen it or felt it, how can we give it? How can we give it? So in a way, there's tips that I'm going to give at the end. Hello, Michael. Hi, Bob. Uh, the tips is building and strengthening our relationship, this loving relationship with our parents, this loving relationship and accepting them for who they are, accepting this core connection that we have from the day that we are conceived, that we are inside mom's belly, that we hear everything, feel everything, right? Everything they eat, it impacts the baby. Everything that mom feels, hears, uh, the way she is touched affects the baby. So in a way, uh, even Dr. Winthrop uh, was saying that when a mother is smoking during pregnancy, it closes the heart chakra of the child. Or when the father is smoking and uh, after the baby is born, kisses the baby, the smell from the cigarettes and the toxins and everything is placed on the skin of the baby. So everything uh, about the baby, the connection with mother and parents is so crucial. And from the day that we are cradled in her arms, from the smell of the skin, and we're realizing how by being the first C-section uh, in Iran, uh, I was away and detached from my mom for two days until they connected me and brought me to her. So there's a detachment working in building that relationship, building the relationship that the protector was not they from day one to embrace. So how many of us truly go through things like this? Or even mothers that love their children, but they don't hug. They don't hug and kiss and do all that. 
And there's moms that just salivate over their children, right? And here's my question to you. How much of a core deep work have you done to heal yourself, to heal your dis-ease? And it can be core work, not easy work. And what is it that they say? The beginning is very difficult. It's hard work. In the middle of any transformation, any think that we are ready to transform and become better, the middle part, it can become challenging. But as we transform, oh my God, it's glorious. It's glorious. The tears that come through, and it's not for them, it's for us. The tears of self-appreciation and self-acceptance. So as we adults become older, and become the caretaker, um, some of the tips is, instead of changing what was, because we can't, everything I do, even the work I did was this evoking, right? I evoked so much and I got to embrace it. Got to embrace all of it. But there is no wrong, there is no right, there was no bad, or good it just is and if we can only accept it as such it just is we can't change the past but what we can do is modify it within ourselves the way we look at things how we look at things and if we edit it and breathe 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 in, stretch, stretch your arms and breathe and say, I can, I matter. And that is how we come to embrace. Hmm. Embrace who you are with all the good and the bad, the right, the wrong, the big, the small, the tall, the short, the black, the white. <laughs> those are all labels those are all labels because at the end of the day we all want to be what accepted and loved cherished everything to love and be loved so how can we do this change yourself change you and by changing ourselves we change our environment we change our parameter we change as we change this energy exudes out of us and away from us and out into the world and no matter who's around us mom dad grandma blessings of cousins and aunts and friends and colleagues they get this new energy coming from you Maybe not the timid, not the bully, maybe not the one who holds herself back and not the one that pushes so much to be something, but just you. To be comfortable in your own body. To be comfortable in who you are. That's it. And that is the work that I do now I can say, you matter. As a matter of fact, another thing is have this realistic expectation. Have this realistic, realistic expectations of yourself. This is what I can do. And every single day I can make one change or two change. Or once you have this beautiful 3E, which is the evoking and embracing, the evolving becomes so much beautiful that it becomes beautiful for you. And you go, aha. Just aha. Aha about your body, aha about you, aha about where you are in life. The choices that we have made to be where we are 
and what we can. Mm, the word, what we can do from now on. Another one is, another tip is communicate. How do you communicate? Instead of coming from fear base of, what is this person going to think about me? What will mom say? Is she going to become defensive? Is she going to be this? How about, this is what I feel. And this is the changes I am making. And if it is difficult for you to communicate, you can just start journaling. Just journal about how you feel, where you are, what you want. Uh, what does it, it, what is it that you held yourself back from or perception, what you thought yourself, uh, what you thought of what you held yourself back from, and what is it that you are willing to do today to stand up for yourself, to show up for yourself? Hmm. Just write it down. Maybe you don't want to communicate at this very moment, but writing it for yourself. You're communicating, you're releasing, you're sharing. And it's coming from here, holding inside and suppressing those emotions and thoughts and feelings, and you put it on a piece of paper. By doing this, it comes out of your hand. And I would truly suggest you write instead of type. Because writing with a pen or a pencil, it, it gets downloaded from your psyche, from your subconscious mind. And it's just beautiful how the energy flows into this pen on, on a paper. So do this. Just write. And allow yourself five minutes or ten minutes just to write and keep at it. And how do we become more active listener? Becoming more active listener with our parents. And I've been practicing this for the few months. First, it was whatever she said, I would have an answer back, right? I'm the therapist. But now I'm learning, learning that whatever she's saying is because she wants to communicate. So for me to sit, and I usually give myself a few moments just to listen. And then my few moments turns to more minutes and I just listen. Listen to her story and hold space for her as well. And then I can go and do, get back to my business. How do we repair the damages from the past and realize it's the past. It's not now. It's not real unless we make it real. The past, although has affected, we can change. And I am more than happy to be the person who helps you make that change within yourself. Heal within begins by healing within yourself first before we can help someone else. And I guess after 20 years of doing this work, there's always something more to learn. What is another thing I know is when you walk into a house or an office with a library of books and plethora of information, that means if you have read those books, I hope you have, my books, I cherish them because I have read every single page. It's just picking up another book and refreshing yourself and going, ah, yes, that's a good message. And put yourself in her shoes. Sometimes we have to do the walk. That's it. Even for a few moments a day. And realizing it's not always about us but them. How can I hold space for what she went through? I can't fix it. I can't make it better. How can I hold space and listen? 
So with that, let's start hugging ourselves more, appreciating this beautiful self, this beautiful person. And I am open for comments. I would love to take comments. I'm grabbing my tea. Um, if you are here live, uh, share it with an emoji, make a comment. Uh, I'd like to know what you think and how I may be of an assistant. I can just answer anything right here. And if this is a replay, by all means, just say replay and let me know. You can also message me. I'm getting a message. Uh, yes. I'm getting all the messages. Hello, Becky. Hi, Chris. Hi, Rich. Hi, Bob. Thank you for being here, being live. And uh, so today's message has all been about love, relationship, mother, daughter, mother, son, and it doesn't matter. It's we all have a mom. We all came from a mom. And so many are moms. Listen. And know that I think majority of moms have done the best, the best to their ability. And it's not about pointing fingers and saying you did wrong. And it's pointing fingers and saying that impacted me. And today I can become a better parent to myself. And what I want in my life, I can start making that change today. I hope today's message was beneficial to you. As always, this is Lisa, founder of Heal Within, where transformation begins. Uh, if you liked today's message, please share. You can find me on right there. Subscribe to my YouTube channels. Or, uh, my parents have passed, but I love the message as always. You look great. Thank you, Michael. Um, parents can pass. As a matter of fact, I want to share one thing. Had a client just last week that was saying something this is what she expressed of course i will never share uh, the identity of my clients but it might be helpful she was saying that for years and years she was a caretaker of a mom as she was going through dementia and a lot of physical ailments as well to a point that she wished she would die and when the time came and her mom did pass on, she felt this deep resentment and yet guilt. Guilt of that she didn't do enough, guilt that she was feeling this way, guilt that how could she be a loving daughter and feel this kind of a resentment and wanting her to go so she can be free. And now she's no longer free because now she is just filled with all this shame and guilt well doing a lot of deep work it was releasing anger releasing shame releasing guilt because those are the most negative and potent feelings for us to hold on to i don't think any of us willingly if we will it have so much power to will that kind of uh, someone's death. I, I truly believe we all go when it's time, unless there's an accident or a murder. That's not what I'm talking about. But one cannot will another person to pass on. So her guilt, we worked on releasing her anger, her resentment, her guilt and by doing so her shame for feeling of that also subsided we're just incredible unique and delicate and 
multifaceted human beings. It's so good to be alive, isn't it? This is Lisa. I'm here for you to hold space. Look forward to seeing you next week. And by all means, God bless you and may the universal light surround you. Goodbye for today.